Hi, I'm Megan with Sincere Shipping, and today I want to talk about row row vessels. The roll on roll off ship is one of the most successful types of vessels operating today, and this is because they're flexible, they integrate well with other transport systems, and they have a high level of speed. So that's made them very popular along many different shipping routes. A roll-on, roll-off ship is defined as any ship that's specially designed to transport wheeled cargo. And that wheeled cargo can be anything from automobiles to boats to heavy machinery. It covers a wide array of cargo. And actually, some lines have even started experimenting and allowing inoperable cargo that can be forklifted on and off the vessel for an additional fee. Now, even though these row row vessels have been commercially successful, they have been involved in some really bad, uh, catastrophic and devastating accidents due to some issues with the structure of the vessel itself and how the cargo is handled. So um, in this video, I wanna discuss briefly the background of row row vessels, the problems involved, and the way in which the shipping community has responded to those problems, and why row row vessels are such a great option for shippers today. So to start with the development of row rows, basically row row vessels started actually in the very early days of the steam train, and what would happen at this time was trains were loaded onto um, vessels when the rivers were too wide for bridges. A train would be loaded on a vessel by rail at one side of the river and then off on the other side of the river at another rail berth. In the Second World War, they started applying this principle to road vehicles and then in the late 1940s and early 1950s, post-World War II, uh, we saw this being applied in commercial ships and from there on we have the development of the modern railroad vessel. So for the shipper, the railroad vessel offers a number of advantages over traditional container ships, and these really haven't changed from the very beginning until now. First, speed. Um, as the name implies, obviously, cargo is driven on the vessel at the port of loading and off the vessel at the port of discharge. This is a lot faster than traditional container ships, where all the cargo has to be lifted on and off the vessel via a crane. Secondly, the row row vessels integrate well with other transport systems, notably containers. Standardized containers became popular basically about the same time as row row vessels did, starting mid 20th century. And so as developments came in the technology of loading containers, row row vessels kept up to pace. Uh, they're so adaptable that there was never this issue of, um, hold on, we, we have new technology here with containers, but Roro hasn't caught up yet. Roro is always ready, always adaptable, and so this is very efficient for shippers. Roro vessels has, have also proven quite popular with vacation goers and private car owners because before the 1950s, anyone that wanted to take their car overseas, whether it was for two weeks or two years, had to have it craned into the cargo hold of a vessel, which was very expensive and very time consuming. So obviously that prohibited a lot of people from taking their car overseas with them. After the railroad vessel came into, um, came into use, everything changed and a lot of ports boomed as a result. Colonel's Island in Brunswick, Georgia is pretty much entirely Roro. Jacksonville is heavily Roro. Baltimore is heavily Roro. So this change where people could um, efficiently and fairly inexpensively take their car overseas with them was uh, great for the economy, both tourism-wise and for the ports. By 1994, there were around 4,600 railroad ships in operation around the world. And think about that for a minute. That's a really astonishing number considering that 60 years, 50 years prior to that, there were none. That's a huge difference. Most of these vessels operate around Europe and trading patterns reflect that. If you look at traditional container ships, the most common routes are North America to Europe, 
Europe to Japan and um, North America to Japan, as opposed to Roro, where the com most common routes are North America to Europe, Europe to the Middle East, and interestingly, North America to the Caribbean. I have a feeling that North America to Caribbean route is fueled by um, vacationers and retirees, but that's just an inkling. I don't have any proof to back that up. Uh, the Ruru fleet can be divided into three main categories. The first is pure car and truck carriers. They're known as PCCs for pure car carriers and PCTCs for pure car and truck carriers. The second is a Roro vessel that's designed to carry any type of world cargo, whether it be cars or machinery. And the third is a vessel designed to carry both containers and Roro cargo. And those have really been pioneered and accepted mostly by ACL, which is Atlantic Container Line. I would I venture to say they have the largest fleet of these hybrid vessels that do both types of cargo. So now that we have covered kind of a brief background of the railroad vessel, I want to go over the problem areas uh, fairly quickly because I don't want to bore anyone, but I, I want everyone to understand what the issues are. There are seven issues. First, lack of internal bulkheads. On conventional ships, the hull is divided into a number of separate watertight holds by means of transverse bulkheads. So in the event where the hull is damaged and water gets into the vessel, those watertight holds limit or delay the inrush of water. So one of two things happens. Either the ship sinks slowly enough for everyone to get off of the boat and save themselves, or um, it actually prevents the ship from sinking entirely. With Roro ships, the installation of transverse bulkheads would be a major obstacle because the whole idea of the Roro ship depends upon being able to drive the cargo into the vessel at one end and off of the vessel at the other end. The installation of fixed transverse bulkheads would prevent that, obviously. Now, although Roro vessels are all fitted with watertight collision subdivision and engine room bulkheads below the vehicle decks, those huge vehicle decks, of which there are many, usually on each vessel, make it possible for water and fire to enter and spread very rapidly. That's a major concern. And actually, the reason I listed it first was because it is the predominant concern. Everything kind of goes back to that. The second is cargo access doors. On a typical Roro vessel, there are access doors at the bow and the stern, front and back. Cargo on, cargo off, what we just talked about. Some, car, um, some railroad ships actually have them on the sides of the vessel also. This represents a potential weak spot because over the years, those doors can become damaged, twisted, etc., and um, that creates some problems. And it happens mostly when the door service ramps, so bow and stern particularly. Third is stability of the vessel. The movement of cargo on the vehicle deck can affect the intact stability of the ship, which causes the ship to shift. The sudden inrush of water following damage to the hull or a failure of watertight doors causes even more serious and rapid damage. In addition, the fact that row row ships have a very large superstructure in comparison to other more traditional types of ships <coughs> excuse me, means that they are also more affected by wind and bad weather. Fourth is low freeboards. Cargo access doors on the vessel are often very close to the waterline. So if there's any defective trim or a sudden movement, um, the cargo access threshold can actually go below the waterline. And if the doors open, um, you get an inrush of water, which could potentially cause the ship to capsize. And one would think, well, why would the door be open? But this actually can happen if it's in port, if it's docked at port, loading and unloading. There have been accidents that have caused ships to sink where the door was open, water's moving, and um, the ship sinks a little bit below the water line, and then the water rushes in and causes the vessel to sink. So it's not completely unheard of. It has happened before. Fifth is cargo stowage and securing. We'll get into this more a little bit later. But basically, the cargo can break loose if it's not correctly stowed and secured. 
The problem is worse because the crew members of the ship can't necessarily see how the cargo is stowed inside, and so when a heavy load breaks loose, it can cause other units to follow suit, and you get um, a lot of cargo shifting around, which causes damage to the ship itself, potentially, and also you can have spillage of substances like gasoline, because whereas the gas in a car would be drained if it's containerized, on a railroad vessel, it still does have gas in it. Um, sixth is life-saving devices. The high sides of many modern railroads pose problems regarding life-saving devices because the higher up a lifeboat is, the more difficult it can be to launch. And that's especially true if the ship is moving um, very badly in rough seas. And the seventh is the crew. All of the factors that we just mentioned indicate that railroads are highly sophisticated ships and they require very careful handling. So, of course, it follows that they are exceptionally vulnerable to human error. So after hearing all of that, you would say, well, why would anyone put anything on a railroad ship? Um, actually, they're very safe, and I think we can attribute their safety to the fact that the crews on these ships, while more vulnerable to human error, are very highly skilled and very highly trained. They're some of the best crews in the world. Statistics show that the cargo loss rate's actually the same for railroad vessels as it is for container ships. And if you're interested, those statistics have been published by Lloyd's Register of Shipping. They're the world casualty statistics. And so if you want to look those up and um, see them for yourself or read up on it some more, that's where you can find them. Now, as I mentioned, we would talk about what the shipping community has done in the area of railroad safety. Um, the first is that one thing, one interesting thing, thing they have done is, um, notably, they have actually classified railroad vessels under passenger ferries, passenger ships. And the most important result of that is that the deck where vehicles are parked has to be above the waterline. And anything below those decks, below the waterline, has to be subdivided by vertical watertight bulkheads. So while it does not eliminate the issues that are brought on by the lack of internal transverse bulkheads on every, every deck, it at least um, helps to ameliorate that. The next thing I want to go over a little bit is fire safety. Um, there have been a lot of regulations enacted that deal with um, motor vehicles with fuel in their tanks. So that really specifically to fire detection and alarm requirements, fire extinguishing arrangements, ventilation and precautions against the ignition of flammable vapors. So they've really worked heavily to combat the issues uh, with water and fire, which, as I said before, were the two prime concerns with railroad vessels. Now, um, I guess pretty much the last thing I want to touch on is cargo safety. Apart from stability, the problem which has created the most concern in railroad shipping is cargo stowage and security. Uh, about half of all um, railroad losses are actually attributed to the shift of cargo and operational faults. So there are five difficulties with cargo stowage that I want to go over. The first is stowage of cargo on deck. Since the cargo is driven on and off the ship, and once it's on board, it's stowed very tightly together, it's often difficult to position the lashings and other arrangements for securing the cargo in the best possible locations. Secondly is the variety of cargo carried, and that is that railroad ships are able to carry a wide variety of cargo on a lot of their vessels. I mean, aside from the PCTCs and such, they carry everything under the sun, really. And so from that reason, it's pretty much impossible to devise a cargo lashing system that's ideal for every type of unit being loaded onto the vessel, a severe lack of uniformity. Uh, third is the lack of transverse bulkheads, which I know we've talked about now a few times, but just to bring it up in relation to cargo security, uh, basically this means that a relatively minor incident, like something toppling over, just a car toppling over because it's not lashed properly, can rapidly escalate into something more serious 
because of a domino effect where one car hits other cars and then all the car goes flying around and um, you get damage to the hull and then you get water coming into the vessel and potential capsizing as we went over before. Fourth, it's difficult to arrange the best loading conditions because cargo units arrive at the port of loading in a very random order and it's difficult for the crew to obtain detailed information about the types of vehicles, the cargo, the weights, etc. Uh, regarding what's going on in the vessel in enough advanced time to plan the loading very carefully. It's basically first come first serve. And fifth you have what's called a rolling period. A rolling period is the time taken for a ship to move to roll from the furthest point on one side to the furthest point on another side. Uh, think the way um, the ship moves this way and this way when it's on rough seas. Railroad ships have a very low center of gravity and so what that means is that this rolling period is very short. Uh, statistics show as little as seven seconds actually. That means that when you're in rough seas um, there's a lot of strain on lashings for the cargo because the cargo is moving around very rapidly. And, of course, that's a, another problem. And just to kind of um, talk about um, the future, really, many of the accidents that have occurred on railroad vessels have been because regulations were not properly implemented or through human error because the shipping community has strived very much to make these ships safer. And of course this is true of every ship, container ships, railroad ships, passenger ships, it doesn't matter, but railroad ships are more complex because any error can lead to major catastrophic consequences uh, compared to other types of vessels. Um, but I think what we need to keep in mind is that the shipping community is always devising new rules uh, that help make these ships safer and this, the crews are highly skilled. So even though there seem to be a lot of inherent problems, the casualty rates uh, for the cargo are extremely low, comparable to container ships. There's nothing to worry about with it. All you do is you get your cargo there um, faster and cheaper. And that is good universally for exporters and importers. So if you have any more questions about Roro, want any more information or some rates or anything, I and my staff can absolutely help you with that. Uh, just give us a call or email. Visit our website, www.sincereshippingllc.com. Also, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So just um, let us know if you have any questions, comments, or inquiries. Thanks.